What's up everybody? Welcome back to Diesel Creek. My name's Matt. This is a 1970s International Load Store that I picked up a few months ago now. Actually, I think I've owned it for over a year now, but I only got it back here a couple months ago. Anyways, in a previous video, we drug this thing out of where it had been sitting for many, many years. I was actually able to drive it out of where it had been sitting. and get it up onto my trailer, brought it home here, and that was the end of it. Now I say we got it running, and we did obviously, we drove it, but it was not running well, okay? This carburetor is messed up pretty good, and it was just pouring fuel into the engine. I was going through like a gallon of fuel in 10 minutes of running, something like that. <laughs> so the carburetor's an issue, there's no brakes, that's another issue, and there's a few other small issues we're gonna address as we go. But you know what we're gonna fix first? The stinking driver's door won't open. And no, it's not locked as so many of you commented. That might not be the brightest bulb in the box, but I'd like to give myself that much credit that I would think to make sure it's unlocked before I'm trying to get into it. Something is wrong in there. We're gonna have to tear it apart on the inside and figure that out. If by some chance you didn't catch the first video on this truck, I'll give you a quick walk around here. It's got its rusty spots. It's not perfect, but it is a pretty solid truck for the age and for as long as it's been sitting. And I tell you what, even though it was just sucking down gasoline like it was its job, it was, uh, you know, running pretty well. So I think we have a good little sight truck on our hands or a good farm truck or something. I don't know that I'll hold on to this truck, but I do have a job for it here in the short term. So, we gotta get this thing going. Well, into the belly of the beast we go. And this is one of those time capsules that just smells of the sweet, sweet fragrance of mouse urine. And of course, International couldn't have used anything that I could remove effectively. With an impact driver, they had to choose straight head screws. So those are fun to remove. No use complaining about it. I guess we'll start cranking these things out of here. I guess we gotta get the door panel off is what I'm saying to get that latch undone. Cause I don't know what else to do. I've tried playing around 10 ways to Sunday. Nothing appears to be working. They're nice coarse screws that seem to break loose pretty easy. Need to get some ventilation going on in here. Oh yeah.
<laughs> all that. <laughs> Wait till you guys see this. All that, and it doesn't even give us very good access to the latch. Dang it. I'm actually using the camera right now because I can't poke my head in there so I'm using you guys to see what I need to do in there. I reached up inside there and sprayed a ton of penetrating oil and I'm just trying to work it back and forth now. Really work that oil in. Also it's hard to show you guys but there's a couple linkages up in here I can feel. I really can't get my head in there too well, but I'm just kind of working everything around, hoping I can free something up. Thank the Lord. I never like to resort to just brute strength, but I was out of options. I soaked that thing down and worked it for probably a half an hour playing around, and I got nowhere. So, a little kick came open, and I don't think I actually heard anything either, which is good. Keep lubing this thing up and working it before I shut the door again, that's for sure. we got it I hope we got it because I just slammed it <laughs> solid as a rock come huh, Marv all right that was a gigantic pain in the butt but I'm glad it's done it is so much harder to work on a vehicle when you're climbing in and out of the passenger side the whole time all right, that's a big one off the list. Let's get started on the fuel system. Pretty windy out here today, so I'm hoping the audio comes across. is isn't all torn up, but I'm gonna work on getting this guy out of here. Still has all this vacuum nonsense hooked up to it. I guess some people would call this uh, unmolested or original condition. It's got a manifold heater down here. I don't really know why you'd want that. There we go. Lord. There's like 72 vacuum ports just on the intake. From here it's not too bad we just got to get this choke cable off of here a throttle linkage uh fuel line four bolts and i think it lifts right off tell you what not a bad little truck to work on Got a nice bumper to stand on, big flat fenders for all your parts and tools. I like this old thing. I think we're home free. Four bolts and this thing's out of here. God, I love cordless power tools. Mmm, just smells like straight varnished fuel. I love it. Away she goes. 
Well, as we said, the truck's been off the road an awful long time. So she's been sitting for quite a while and any fuel that's left in this tank is gonna be just ripe. Well, the good news is the fuel neck isn't all rusty. Ah, I love the smell of varnished fuel. Definitely smells like there's still gas in here or what used to be identified as gas. It smells a lot more like a gallon of Minwax right now. You know, that furniture stuff. Anyways, I would be really nice to be able to run, you know, the factory tank and not have to strap a boat tank to the fender or something. So we'll go ahead and see if we can't push any of the fuel that's still in here out. So back in the good old days, when this truck was built, everything used to be nice and simple and mechanical. None of this electronic crap that we have today. So I picked up another fuel pump for this baby, and I hope it's the right one. I really didn't look at the original one that's on the truck right now. But basically what this does is it bolts to the side of the engine, I think, yeah, like so. And, you know, there's a diaphragm pump in here. This thing runs on the cam or the crank, depending on the engine. There's a diaphragm pump in here, and it sucks fuel in from this side and pushes it out this side to the carburetor. Oh, I actually have that backwards. In, out. What happens over time is when these things sit around for a, a while, this, especially without having gas in them, the diaphragm dry rots in here and will actually get cracks in it. And it may still work and pump a little bit of fuel or it may not work at all. But what happens is the gas gets down past the diaphragm and runs through here right down into your engine oil and contaminates your oil. And that's been known to cause people some great issues so this thing was only 28 bucks and for 28 bucks it's cheap insurance that we don't have any other issues so this is the fuel line coming in from the tank this goes into a filter right here or a sediment bowl and then into the fuel pump over here and actually i can't tell yet we might have the wrong pump I'm going to pull this fuel line off of here though and we're going to try to pressurize the tank and drain any fuel into the into a bucket oh that was nice well i don't know if you guys can see what's going on here i just tried to flex this old soft fuel line not happening snapped right off lovely i guess it's no longer a soft fuel line to uh force all the fuel or liquid or whatever the heck is at the bottom of this tank out if there is anything I figure we'll just get a couple rags, stuff the air hose in here, pressurize it, and force it out that fuel line the other end. is clogged up solid I guess I'm gonna have to run a whole new fuel line because it's way too long to try to fish a wire through I think the only other thing I can maybe do is spray a bunch of penetrating oil in there and hope it breaks down the clog I kind of doubt that'll work well apparently that was an epic fail the fuel line is obviously completely plugged solid with uh, varnished gasoline, which I have seen several times in the past. So here's the two straps that hold the tank up. We're gonna have to go ahead and undo those. I already soaked them down. Hopefully we can get those bolts loose and lower this tank down. <clears throat> we'll just have to go ahead and do this the right way. I was trying to do it the fly-by-night way. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. The good news is it sounds like the tank is bone dry. 
The bad news is that sometimes when there's nothing in them, they'll rust out. They'll also rust out with stuff in them, so it's kind of a, just a complete crapshoot as to whether your tank's going to hold out when you sit this long. You strip on me. So the filler neck comes down through the cab here and there's just one clamp. We should be able to undo it and drop the tank down. Uh -huh. I hate these kind of clamps. Well, it's loose, but you know that rubber's hardened to the point where this thing isn't going to want to come out. Ta-da! Not too bad. I tell you what, I think we got really lucky. There's just a teeny little bit of fuel in here, it sounds like. And uh, just rolling it around and looking, man, this tank looks like it's in beautiful shape, which we got really lucky on because I'll bet these things are pert near impossible to come by these days. Why, this thing's moving easy. Man, got really lucky here. Unbelievable. <laughs> you would have way more struggle on a 2009 F-150 than you would this thing. Look at that. Now well, the ring's loose. Why isn't the whole thing coming out? There we go. Nope. Little gasket there we're gonna almost destroyed. Guess while we got this thing out too, we'll go ahead and clean up the sensors on it. See if the float still floats. Doesn't sound like there's any fuel in it. Man, this thing could still work. I forget what you call that. Is that a potentiometer? No, I don't remember. Basically, it just runs on a bunch of different contacts there. And I think it's measured resistance and that's what tells the fuel gauge where it's at. I know how it works, but I can't explain it. This fuel float is pretty nasty. We'll get that scrubbed off before we put that back in. Now, I know it doesn't look fantastic, but man, I've seen way worse in much newer vehicles. We'll go ahead and dump out that little knit of nastiness there, and we'll probably flush it out with a little bit more clean fuel. And then uh, we'll make sure that the pickup foot there is allowing fuel to get through. Uh, we'll check the line too. You know, if that foot is clogged up, that could be our whole problem. We may not have to replace the fuel line. It might just be that pickup foot. Oh, yeah. Mmm. Well, that's what it's supposed to look like, isn't it? Ah. <laughs> We're gonna do a little experiment here and dump some of that into a pan, a metal pan, and see if it'll even catch on fire because I highly doubt it at this point. Place your bets now, folks, with a substance once known as gasoline even combust. <laughs> it won't even stay lit. Well, there we might have it. There we got a little fire. Nope, nothing. Junk. All right, let's see if our pickup tube is clogged up here. Uh huh. Yeah. I can't get any 
I can't get any air to go through the pickup tube, so unless there's a check valve on the foot in there, and I don't think that's the case, then that foot is clogged up. Now, luckily for us, International was kind enough to make this tube removable. I've seen plenty of fuel tanks that that is not the case, and you're pretty much just screwed. You gotta like bust the end of the foot off or put a new line in somehow. I really wasn't planning on getting this far into this whole thing, but probably best that we are. Give us less grief down the road. Did something. Yep. I got it. Sorta. Of. I think I broke it more than anything. Yep. There we go. Yeah. Sorta. Of. Part of it fell off in the tank. There we go. There's the pickup foot. Yeah. Still can't blow through this thing. I'm sure you guys aren't gonna be able to see, but I can tell it's plugged up solid right there at the bottom of the foot. Probably right about where the gas level was whenever it decided to get parked and uh, dry out for 30 years. So I got a torch tip cleaner here. I'm gonna attempt to ram this out of here. Oh, it's kind of like jelly. Really, I could probably take a quarter inch drill bit and do better. I got through-ish. Man. Yeah, it's, it's not good. Ugh. Can you guys see it? Just chunkage. Ugh. Hardened crap. That's lovely. But I bet we can get through it now. <laughs> no, still can't get through it. Dang it. Well, I'm going to soak some blaster in there and uh, hopefully that breaks it down a bit. Now in the meantime here, I'm going to go ahead and put some gas in here and try to flush this thing out a few times. Definitely getting better. I'm gonna do one more time and then I think we're gonna call it good because man, this stuff is getting expensive these days. All right, I like it. That was actually pretty clean that time too. I feel pretty good about it. All right, I've scrubbed and scrubbed. I don't wanna to scrub too hard. That stuff doesn't wanna come off. The float still floats, so. As long as it's doing its job, I don't think we need to worry about it. I don't want to damage the float trying to clean the float. All right, here's the pickup foot. It sat for a while and... I don't know if you guys can hear that, but I can blow through it just fine right now. I blew it out real good with a compressor and it is flowing freely. So I'm going to have to take this thing down to the parts store, see if we can't find some sort of a uh, filter sock to slide over this thing. And we'll be ready to put it back together. Well, we've got our old Holly in the shop here. Go ahead and rebuild this thing on the workbench. It is my belief that uh, just about everybody's seen a good carburetor rebuilder 10 at this point. So I'm uh, going to show you the highlights of this thing. I'm thinking the bowls are going to be pretty gunky, so we'll check that stuff out. But really, I'm just going to give a pretty cursory overview of this thing. Anytime I'm messing with these carburetors, uh, I like to lay down a nice big diaper or big uh, cloth in this case and that way during the process if you're tearing something down and you drop something you're gonna notice it it's gonna be on the sheet and odds of it bouncing or rolling away are reduced as well Oh 
Oh yeah. This is gonna be a gunky one. Oh goodness. Come on. Just got the gasket holding us now. And the crossover tube. Oh yeah. Look at that. Huh? That's good for it, huh? Ugh. That is just lovely. Not only is it varnished fuel, it appears that we had some water in there too, which has caused a little bit of corrosion. So we're going to have a little bit of extra time taking this thing apart. Every single little piece is going to have to come apart. We're going to throw it in the uh, cleaning solution overnight and then reassemble it tomorrow. What a mess. Oh, yeah. <laughs> ah, this one's worse than the other side. Would you just look at all of that goodness? Oh. Wowzers. I've seen worse, but this is up there. She's pretty scummy. Ugh. these parts sit in here overnight we go ahead and start cleaning and reassembling today oh look at that those came out a lot nicer than they went in yeah those look great I thought I was gonna have a lot more work to do here but perhaps not Hopefully we got the proper carb kit this time, and we're going to get this thing thrown back together. Alright, well, if you've never done one of these things, these parts kits can seem a little daunting, because there are, as you can no doubt tell, a crap load of parts. But, rest assured, everything has a place, and by the time you're done, everything will be in its place, and 
like I said, they even include the cheat sheet, so you really can't screw this up. I like to kind of take everything out of here, make sure nothing's stuck together, and stack all the similar pieces together. All the big parts that would be harder to lose, I pull them out and then put all the little pieces in here in the tray where you can keep better track of them and sort them out. Also be careful that none of the pieces are outside of the tray but inside of the plastic. So they basically break down the carb into subsections. So, so like these here are all the parts for each float bowl. So we'll start with those things, get those out of the way, and that's what you do. You just incrementally knock out pieces of this puzzle and it becomes easier and easier. It's like when you do a jigsaw puzzle, you start with the corners and the edges. Uh, and then the middle tends to just fill itself in. So let's get going. Really nothing too interesting to see here, so I'm just going to time lapse this for uh, time purposes. Alrighty, we got this thing all put back together. It's time to go throw it on the truck and hopefully it still runs. I did uh, have to silicone this thing up because I think I mentioned there was damage right here and it doesn't affect anything ultimately, but it would provide an air leak past the air filter. So we'll just silicone that damage over and should be good as gold. One thing I should mention too, most carburetor kits fit a variety of specific carburetors, so it is not a big deal to have some leftover pieces. That being said as well, I did have to re-disassemble part of this, as you guys may have noticed, because I completely forgot to put the jets into the rear uh, metering plate. But you'll have that. As long as you catch it before you put it on the truck, you're not doing too bad. The time has come for us to reassemble this fuel tank. Now, remember, when I pulled this fuel pickup tube out of the tank here, there was um, a pickup screen filter, whatever you want to call it, on the end of the line here. And it just disintegrated. It's been sitting in here for, you know, since 1971. It's, it's probably original. And it just disintegrated. Now, they may still make those things somewhere. And I'm sure somebody in the comments is going to tell me, oh, you could have got these brand new, same correct part number. But... I spent some time looking and the guys at the parts store spent a lot of time looking and we can't we couldn't find the actual original uh, pickup filters that went on here so we were gonna adapt a pickup screen from like a fuel pump sending unit but actually ended up digging through all the fuel filters on the shelf and so if you ever need to do this for a quarter inch line a 3052 fuel filter will work just fine now the 3052 comes with a check valve. That's what this twisted garbage is. This it actually has a check valve in it when you pull it off the shelf, but you can easily just remove it. But we're gonna need this rubber part, and all we're gonna do is trim the end of this off, and then it fits right over top of this thing and holds the filter on the pickup just like so. And it's basically nearly identical to what we had from the factory and it was an off-the-shelf part that most parts stores carry. So 
So basically, that's what we got. But I just put it on out here to show you guys. I gotta stick this thing down through first. Look at that, like it was made for it. Perfect. So just as I was about to reinstall the float here, I noticed there was a small crack at the end and I was not equipped to do fine soldering today. I have large diameter acid core solder and that was it. But uh, I didn't bother to record it because I figured it was just gonna go terribly wrong and we just wouldn't have a float. But actually, after about an hour of fiddling around, things went bad right off the hop. I was trying to just plug this little crack. The whole thing came desoldered and I had to fix the crack first stick the half back together, re-solder it, which I actually feel pretty good about that joint, and then fix the factory pinhole that lets the gas escape as they solder it. So, I'm not even gonna float test it because I don't wanna be disappointed, but there's a chance it'll work. It doesn't look terrible and I can't visibly see any cracks, so. Yeah. I think that thing's sealed up good. We're ready to reinstall this bad boy. Well, a floor jack would be pretty helpful right about now, but it's a shame I don't have a floor yet. Well, there's the fuel strainer and the fuel pump. I'm going to attempt to get that thing off of there. You guys have a much, much better view of the whole system than I do. I cannot see hardly any of it. So I'm going to try to work from underneath and see what I can do here. There we go. Come on. Here, as you can see, a screws all the way around it. We can actually disassemble this thing and replace just the diaphragms if they are bad. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm off to the parts store. Hopefully I come back with diaphragm gaskets, or at least they can order them. So while I'm running off to the store, I'm going to throw some brake fluid in the master cylinder here because uh, she is bone dry. I'm going to throw some brake fluid in there and uh, hopefully it kind of self bleeds a little bit and maybe by the time I get back I'll figure out where all the fluid's going. That's full to the top. We'll see. There was absolutely no pedal at all before. I mean, the thing would just go straight to the floor. But would you believe me if I told you that I just spent a little bit of time pumping this thing and now I actually have some pedal? It's not great. Definitely still needs like hardcore bled and we could just be pushing fluid onto the ground somewhere. But there's, there's pedal now, so that's good. Surprise, surprise. Our uh, antiquated fuel pump here is 
NLA were no longer available for you less part savvy people. They couldn't find anything that really crosses, so we're just going to run with this one that we already had. Uh, unfortunately, that means that we're going to have to change up our plumbing a bit. So let's let the shade tree engineering commence. Okay, so we have to make a new soft line that runs over here from this hard line. I don't know if you guys can see that. We'll have it come off, and then I'm just going to put an inline filter right here, and then plug into the inlet side of the pump, and then we will have to bend up a new hard line, or re-bend this one somehow, to make it fit on a 90 down into here. So I was actually able to uh, miraculously cobble together some fuel lines here and bend up that hard line to make it all plumb into the pump. So, it's not a SEMA truck, but it'll work. Alright, well, I think we drop a battery in this thing and we're ready to try to fire it up. Well, the battery's a bit big for the tray, I think. Oh yeah. But it should start this thing up. Well, with the battery in here now, we should be ready to try to fire this thing up. I'm gonna dump a little bit of fuel down through the bowl vents here, which will help fill the bowls up and make this thing start easier without having to crank it forever because we essentially have to prime the entire fuel system from the tank all the way up to, up to the bowls here. So this is a two cycle mixed fuel here. This has oil in it, which I always use mainly because it's easier to fill a water bottle with it. But uh, it just helps give the engine some extra lubrication when it starts up for the first time here. We had this engine running when we brought it here a few months ago, so it's not like it's been sitting for umpteen years again, but a little bit of extra lubrication sure won't hurt this old girl. All right, now the odds of this thing running smoothly are very, very slim. I just threw the, uh, the fuel needles at two turns out on both of them and the float levels both need adjusted yet so just getting this thing to start at all is going to be a step. You guys ready? Contact! <laughs> that didn't sound too bad. I tell you what, this thing, I feel like this is probably a good engine in this truck. I'm going to have to give her a little squirt again here. We're just trying to get fuel up to the uh, carburetor right now. It's got a long way to go through the lines. And contact. good so I know you guys probably couldn't tell but what was happening was fuel was blowing out of the crossover tube connection here so I had that bowl back off and I kind of worried about that o-ring maybe not seating correctly and it appears my fears were founded so I'm gonna have to 
potentially pull that float back off and reseat that whole tube. Probably not the right thing to do, but I tried a Hail Mary. I could actually spin this tube and shoved it back that way in hopes that I uh, was able to pick up that O-ring, but we'll give it another shot real quick. Nope. We don't need a whole bunch of fuel spraying around the engine bay here, so I guess I'm gonna have to pull that float off of there and readdress this properly. I got the new O-ring in there. We actually tore the old one, kind of cut a chunk of it off. I guess I didn't put the bowl on squarely when I put it back together in the shop. So luckily I had an O-ring kit here. We should be good to go. You guys ready? Contact. adjustment left to do this thing actually seems like it's running pretty good we're dripping fuel down here now though what's up with that better not be coming out of this thing okay well it would appear that we might be running lean since giving it air shuts it down tell you what one thing I'm proud to see is look at that the fuel gauge is working three and a quarter tank which means that my <laughs> My brazing job or uh, soldering job on the float must have held up, so I'm impressed by that. Let's give this thing some choke, see if it's going to fire back up. Ah. <laughs> see if we can rev it with the choke on. Oh yeah. So I think we're just running lean. It's about half choke. Yeah. go come on stay running you jerk We have this thing running good enough to stay running now while I adjust the float levels, which is uh, critical to do before we try to tune the carburetor in. So we'll take out that sight plug on the side there, and then we'll adjust that nut on the top, and that changes the float level. And you want it to just barely be right there at that sight window. some playing around here I think I got it running halfway decent now remember I'm by no means a carburetor guru especially four barrels on V8s this is really only the second one I've spent much time playing with but basically the quick and dirty way that I do it after you get those floats adjusted so that no fuel spilling out of the sight windows there's a high and low needle on either side, and I may be even screwing up that terminology, but you have two adjusting screws, let's just say. And you very, very slowly start turning them in 
until you notice the engine start to stumble a little bit and then you just back her up until it smooths out maybe just a hair past where it smooths out and then you leave it for a little bit and we're gonna make sure this engine's good and warm and we can run it a little while and uh, fine-tune from there but it seems to be doing pretty good it is idling a bit high I have it turned down all the way part of is it yeah right there seems okay to me I think we just need a stronger return spring would be would do a lot for us but uh it's not doing bad let's check the vital signs in here the floats holding out so that's good looks like we're charging on the gauge that's good our coolant temperature is right in the middle where it should be maybe a little below so we've been running about 20 minutes now uh oil pressure is a little low Hmm. let's check that before we run this thing any longer now I know I had checked this oil before we fired this thing up when I bought it it's just a pretty thin oil it's probably just straight 30 weight but it doesn't smell like it's polluted with gas or anything like that it's not over full it's full up to where it's supposed to be it's just pretty thin oil I've been jumping on the bandwagon of just running 1540 and everything yeah I think the oil's okay it's just a thin oil so the oil pressure is not bad it looked like we had 25 pounds at idle I'll throw the air cleaner assembly back on here and we'll uh, see if we can't take this thing for a little putt air filters in I just remembered we have this 4x4 underneath the bed that's keeping the bed from sitting all the way down so before I go bouncing down my laneway here I'm gonna try to raise the bed up I've never tried the PTO or the bed or anything good chance it's out of hydraulic fluid because these things tend to leak especially when they sit this long so we'll see what happens One thing I see they have going on here that obviously isn't factory is this chain. Now what that looks like that does is limit the travel of the bed. I'm betting they had problems with this linkage. If the bed would want to go past that point where that chain catches it, it could get to where these things are in line and that would lock it and then uh, you'd have a heck of a time getting the bed back down the cylinder doesn't have any power down I don't think most dump beds do not so it wouldn't have the power to pull that thing back past center and bring the bed back down but man look at the underside of the bed even the floor is not dented up at all no rust holes in it really I see a little bit of rust over there and right here which is of course right above the wheels where it would rust out but that's the worst of it and that is not bad that's easily patchable 
little bit of garbage that was in the bed when I got the truck. Everything else, everything's all, that's all was here. Man, what a good $500 purchase. With the trailer. All right, let's put the bed down and hit the road. Yeah, she's coming on down. So the brakes came back too a bit they're not perfect but uh if you pump the pedal a little bit they work so i think i'm just gonna bleed them out and i think they'll be fine fine
I tell you what, guys, I am impressed. Everything works on this old truck. The gauges all work. I haven't checked the odometer yet, but I don't even care about that. According to the odometer, too, for those curious, 79,422 miles. This trailer vacuum deal, the gauge works on it. It seems to function. Even the washer squirter, it work, there's nothing in it, but it works. And it's one of those old school bag types that hangs under the fender. Everything works. It's amazing. The radio tries to work, but the, the speakers seem better days. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this, I don't think. The two-speed axle even works. I forgot to tell you guys about that. Now, I've never used a two-speed axle, so a lot of people think that my International has a 10-speed. They think it's a five-speed with a two-speed rear. It's not. It's actually an Eaton 10-speed transmission, and it's a single-speed axle. So this is a little bit different ball game, and you got, like, split shifting and stuff, so I'm going to have to learn that, but uh, I don't think we'll need it too much because... This thing isn't going to be on the road. This is going to be an uh, on-site truck for what we're doing. Tell you what, guys, I love it when a plan comes together. From the moment I laid eyes on this truck, I knew that I liked the styling of it. You know, these are definitely a good looking old school dump truck, but man, this thing is actually a joy to drive. Now, I haven't driven it across the country or anything, but just putting around here, out the road a little bit, it's a really comfortable little ride. The thing turns on a dime. The seat's fairly comfortable. The steering is effortless. It shifts really nice. The only thing I've noticed is that I think that might have some sort of bad bearing in the transmission because in reverse, it has quite a bit of gear whine and sounds to me like a bearing, but we'll see. Like I said, I brought this truck back to life so that we could press it into service around here. We got a big project coming up that we're gonna be needing to haul a lot of dirt for. So. This thing is going to be uh, adding to the force as well as my other international dump truck, my 10 ton that you guys have seen a million times on the channel. All that's left to do on this thing before we really press it into service, I think, is bleed the brakes, change the oil, and make sure the uh, rear end and the transmission have all the proper uh, oil levels in them. But I'm not going to bore you guys with an oil change. You've seen a million of those. I think that we, uh, we really accomplished something here today, and I'm pretty darn happy. So as I said, I'm really taking a liking to this old girl and uh, I had given half a mind about just getting it running and throwing it down the road for somebody else to enjoy, but man, I don't know. <laughs> I'm very bad at naming vehicles. Somebody once told me that only the owner can name them, but I don't really believe that. So, so if any of you guys have any suggestions for a good name for this old beauty, drop them down in the comments and maybe by the next video, I'll be calling this thing by name. Lastly, before we wrap up here, I need you guys to do me a big favor. If you like the video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button down below. It really helps out the channel. It doesn't cost you guys anything. And it also helps me know what content you guys enjoy and what I should focus on in the future. Until the next time, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you later.